I'm Inerva Perez, the producer of the first and only Magnolia Park Oral History Project. The video project is the vision of Dr. Irene Porcarello, president of Houston Community College's Southeast Campus, located on the edge of Magnolia Park, Houston's first barrio. Now, a little history. At the turn of the last century, the early 1900s to be more exact, Magnolia Park, once a tree-lined recreational park near the banks of the Buffalo Bayou, became home to thousands of Mexican families who fled from the then raging Mexican Revolution or to find better opportunities in a new homeland. Mexicans arrived to work on the cotton compresses, the railroads and shipyards, and helped establish the world-renowned Port of Houston, the second busiest port in North America. Today, Magnolia Park is a burgeoning community of industry, producing prominent leaders and businesses run by the hard-working families who still reside there. The story of Magnolia Park is told through the families that settle there. This is their oral histories. I was born in 1937, December 23, 1937. I, my childhood was a very happy childhood. Uh, uh, we didn't have too much, but I always knew that my dad would work. He was born in Galeana, Nuevo Leon, which is about, I guess about 120 miles, 150 miles south of Monterey, if I'm not mistaken, going to Saltillo. Uh, so it's a, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful little town. I think it was right at the right at the end of it, because he was born in 1908. So right if he, yeah. So if he be, so if he came uh, to the United States at the age of 14 or 15, that puts him about around 1921, 22, somewhere around there. Their parents uh, were here uh, when Mexico belonged to Texas. Uh -huh. and my grandma never crossed the border. <laughs> the border crossed her. <laughs> so uh, it, from my grandma, my dad, I mean, what, that would make me my third, gen third generation Texan. Born and raised in Magnolia. I went to Nezavala Elementary, Edison Middle School, and I graduated from Sam Houston High School. Three days after I graduated, I went into the Army. Took basic training in Fort Raleigh, Kansas. Went to Japan as an infantryman, joined the 1st Cavalry Division. I was trained for two weeks by the Marines for, as a scout sniper. That's what I was in Korea. I like this little house at the end of um, Houston Avenue. It was close to the commissary. I'd see my uncles when they went to work and when they went back out. Ramon Villagomez was my grandfather, and his wife, my grandmother, was Fina Martinez. Uh, of course, we called her Mama Fina and him Papa Moni. And they had 11 children, but uh, they had some twins that had died at childbirth or something. And so when they came over, there were nine in the group. But that was including my, my great grandfather, and his name was Jesus Villalobos. Okay, and they traveled from Morelia by train, and it took them several days because on their way it, it was a time of the revolution. When they came to Houston, 
he said that, that uh, they, uh, they moved to Magnolia because it was close to the docks. And they said that's where the jobs were, in the docks, okay? So that's where they all moved there when they moved there. And they moved to Houston, they lived in uh, the, one of the box cars, you know, the train. That's where they all lived, that's, that's where they lived, because there was no homes. That's where they lived. My dad used to be an egg candle. He used to egg, what? egg candle. What but what he did, he, he used to uh, like, uh, he was an egg inspector, okay. sort of. And they, they used to have this box with a, with a light bulb inside and, and two holes. And they would take the egg and put it up against the hole. And it would, it would show inside what was inside if, if the egg was, was whole, if it had, if it had a, a, a chicken, chicken in it, or if it had blood or anything, whatever. And, and so he would sort them out. And so that, that, that's what he did. <laughs> I came to Magnolia Park in 1906. We were one of the very few. And uh, gradually he started meeting with other people but when he worked playing brick and whatever. And uh, they started getting the idea of forming a lodge. So they all used to be together. And then on December 24th, of 1933, I think it was. They, uh, they, they, they said, okay, well, we're going, we're going to make it a lodge, and they elected officers, and uh, they elected their officers. And they said, okay, so we're going to meet once a month, and this is going to be a lodge, and we're going to call it Navidad because today is La Noche Buena. Uh, in so many phenomenal leaders have come out of that particular area, and I think with Houston Community College having its home here in the East End, I hope that this is motivational to all of the students that have so many opportunities because they do speak English. They are here in this country. They've got a wonderful school system in Houston Community College. So they can do so much more than our parents ever did because they had so many barriers. But hopefully it's a lesson of persistence, passion, and making sure you surround yourselves with the right people. They first came into to the East End part of town, which was Magnolia. Originally, I guess it was Harrisburg. And uh, they came and formed a family. Uh, they came here because they were escaping the revolution. Okay? But that was like in the early 1900s, um, 1911, 12. I'm not familiar with the, with the date exactly, but that's the time. And they settled there in Magnolia. And they raised, uh, you know, 11 children. You know, nine boys and, and two girls, and they're um, um, we we all grew up there in the in the school system there in the in the uh, Franklin Elementary, De Savala, and then Edison and Milby and so on. And I can remember, you know, we uh, the food we ate, you know, it was uh, it, it was it wasn't steaks or anything like that, but when it was all comidas. Uh, Mexicanas, you know, the, if you had a round steak, you'd cut it up in little pieces and everybody got a little bit of meat with a little potato and a little gravy and, and some peas and all that, you know. But I remember that and I remember, I guess what I remember mostly was when uh, when Robert and I used to come back from uh, from school. My mother was always making tortillas, it seemed like. And uh, what I remember, and I, I miss a lot, I think about it all the time. Is, uh, she'd be making the flour tortillas and she'd get a big chunk of cheese and make a, a Mexican grilled cheese, I call it. But it, it was, I remember that, you know, we, we never lacked food, I mean, but uh, it was, 
I guess it was the love that was in, involved in making that food for us. That's how much she cared for it. She met my grandfather here. Um, she used to live in Magnolia Park. When they moved, she moved with her sister. Her sister uh, got married, so they, they moved, uh, I, I guess, to Magnolia Park, I mean, because that's where she's always lived. And so um, that's where they met, you know, my grandfather and her. Uh, my grandfather was born in, in San Antonio, um, and his mom was born in Austin. So he didn't have the experience of having to come over from, you know, revolution or whatever. He was always here. Um, so they met, and I think they, uh, I guess, dated for about two years, and then they got married. Actually, what got me started, especially in politics, was uh, the day that uh, President Roosevelt visited Magnolia Park. And, uh, before he came here, he had started the WPA program, which was a program to give people that were out of a job, a job laying brick on the streets of Canal, Navigation, and Harrisburg. That was but a sample of the Magnolia Park Oral History Project, a historical perspective of the many Mexican families who made an indelible mark on the Houston barrio known as Magnolia Park. I'm Inerva Perez.